So we're going to start actually the whole process of working through her reactivity right here. So Maddie here has severe reactivity towards other dogs. We've been working with her for a couple weeks. Her owner before coming to board and training was actually doing everything right, getting her focus off of the other dogs. But now Maddie's at the point where she needs motivation to speed up that decision of making the right decision to not react. And a lot of her issues are fear-based due to lack of socialization from her previous owners. You can see she's from even letting her out of the crate, she's gonna be just in her own mind instantly. So we're gonna start actually the whole process of working through her reactivity right here. So we already got the leash on her. She actually sat, she was listened, but it took us a few times. So now instead of kind of waiting for her to make the right decision, like we usually do like Maddie, Maddie up here, we have to speed things up. So if she doesn't make the right decision to listen to our direction right away, we're gonna go, backwards from what she wants. So Emily here is going to help do that. So all we're looking for to start, so you just wanna make sure when a dog um, you know, has reactivity issues that you're starting out, second that they get out of the crate or out the front door, you have their mind before that. So if she comes out being in her own world right now, when we go out the door, we have no chance at getting her back. So we're gonna start right here in our hour session we might not even make it outside. We'll see. Wait, up here. So we're looking for her to maintain eye contact with Emily the entire time. Daddy, right here. The point of wait is to not go on whenever she wants, whenever the door is open. See, up. Oh, she tried to go out, be in her own world, so it's right back in. And you can just guide her right back in. The point of wait is to be wait. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter if the door's opening. It doesn't matter if food's going down. It's on yeah. my terms. So she should be looking mm -hmm. for Emily's eye contact. Wait. She just always feels the need Maddie. to be looking around everywhere. Maddie. And that's why she's so on edge when she's out on walks and reacting at dogs, people, everything. Because she can't let go of that constant like protective instinct. All of her issues will be resolved if she just lets go okay. of that. Emily said okay. okay now basically when Maddie doesn't even care to come out which is perfect. That means she's staying present with Emily. Good so now we're looking for a Maddie sit. Sit instantly when she comes out. If she doesn't do it instantly at this point because we've been working with her for a couple of weeks, she knows what she's supposed to do. We put her right back in and reset. She doesn't even realize she's going to be so much less stressed if she just looks to the person who's, Maddie. you know, walking her, Emily in this case, but her owner. And it's going to resolve all of her issues. She won't feel the need to be like on edge, protective, just that focusing on her is all she needs. So again, okay. we've worked with her. We've desensitized her and used counter conditioning. We've redirected her to what we want her to do. And at this point, it's just pure stubbornness. So a lot of the times when you have reactivity or any kind of behavioral issue, you have stubbornness on top of that. So you have to first try to work through the behavioral issue, redirect the dog to what we'd rather have them do. And if we still have that stubbornness on top of it, to speed it up, we have to just be very quick, like only give them a couple seconds. Otherwise, they don't get to move forward they move backwards. Okay. Wait, that was better. Maddie, sit. Yay! Yay. Girl, girl, a dog better. will always do what you want them much to do. Better. It just might take a Make very better. long time to go forward and backwards, but the dog will always do it. Have her sit again since so she's getting so excited. Yes. Have her go lay down. Down. Yes, good girl. Maddie. Maddie, sit. Yes. Up, she's resetting again with this weight it's not important that she's just 
physically sitting there. We want her mentally Maddie. looking at Emily yes. as well. Maddie. If her mind is already out the door before we even step outside, Maddie. again, we have no chance at getting her then when she is. So now Emily is using our forward and backward technique with Maddie with the door. If she's staring out, not listening to Emily when the door is open, then it's gonna go further back. Cause you always have to think about what's the reward. The reward is being able to go out further and further, see more Maddie. and more what's outside. We need her to know her Maddie. only key to getting that is checking in with Emily. Maddie. Good, <laughs> much better. Maddie, right here. Good. Okay, Maddie, sit. Oh, yes. quick. Almost. So Maddie. She's gonna have her sit again yes. and do a down. Maddie, down. Because when she just did that sit, it was like the bare minimum. So we're gonna stay in this position or stay in this spot until Maddie fully listens to Emily. Yes, good girl. And if she was gonna be really stubborn there, I think Emily was about to take her in. Yeah, yeah perfect. Up, make her sit again. Maddie. So anytime she goes off in her own world, we're gonna have her sit again. So a lot of times Maddie. working through like reactivity or any right leash related sit. issue, actually yes. every single time, Maddie. it starts before you even yeah. go out the door, a yes. long time before that. So this is always where I start with a client teaching the weight. I mean, obviously even before the weight, teaching all of this before we can even begin Maddie. to work on those added triggers sit. outside. Because yes. typically the second the leash goes on Maddie. a dog, Down. their mind is already thinking about all those dogs that they're gonna need to react Maddie. at and be protective over. So yes. um, this sets Maddie up for success now when she does have, when she is faced with another dog, because what we're doing is when a dog is focusing on you, they're at their full self control. Um, so the longer that their mind wanders, the further from self-control they are. So if you put a harness on the dog and her mind is already out the door, then you start walking closer, closer, you just go out the door. You're already way up here um, before she even sees that other dog. So if she sees another dog up here, it's gonna be a lot harder for her to control herself and be able to, um, you know, have enough self-control to change the behavior from what her natural instinct is to what we're trying to train her to do if she's up here as opposed to here. So anytime she's going up here, we're bringing her back down here and we're not moving forward until she's back down here. If that's too hard for her, then we're putting her backwards to get her back down, back down to here. Then we'll move forward, try again until she does it. So um, good girl, that's really calm. Maddie, you always down. want your dog's mind to just stay with yes. you. If you think about like the average intelligence of a dog, it's just staying with you. It's like, oh, what's next? Food's in front of me, ball's in front of me. It takes intelligent dogs to have behavioral issues like this because she's having anxiety about the future. So our goal with working through any kind of anxiety, reactivity, just anything in general, any behavioral issues, is keeping your dog present with you to just follow your direction. Everyone will be way less stressed.